Uh, when the army rolled in and these clashes erupted between riot police, the army and opposition protesters in the heart of the capital city. Uh, his name is Ibo Mandaza. Uh, we're chatting to him on the line now. Uh, Ibo, some very distressing images coming out of the capital city this afternoon, some of which you captured behind your lens. Yes, yeah, we saw it all life over three hours. So the police trying to contain the rioters. Well, no, I don't think whether I can call writers demonstrators writer because there was no violence as such. And when they couldn't contain the demonstrations, the army moved in with tanks and armored cars and fired light bullets. I've seen people wounded. There are reports of two dead. I can't confirm that, but these are the reports we are receiving. But I have photographs of wounded people lying on the floor. Some apparently dead. Yes, it's a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, Ibo, while you were carrying out your work as a photographer, uh, were you hindered in any way? How is the army and police no, and security I was, I was, police? Not, I was not. I'm not a photographer. I was watching this live on TV from the comfort of a, a restaurant. I was nowhere near the action. Are you in so Harare, Ibo? Yes, I'm in Harare, yes. All right, Ibo, if you were in the restaurant and watching, apologies for calling you a photographer, but if you were in a restaurant and you were watching this unfold live on television, I want to garner the reaction of your fellow Zimbabweans around you watching this unfold on live television. How, how did they feel? How are you feeling right now? People are shocked, of course. I mean, we have, we have never seen uh, armed, armed persons attacking civilians for a very long time, for decades, you know? Mm. It was terrible. Mm. These were virtually commanders in, in uniform, armed, violent, aggressive, you know? Mm. And people ran for the dear lives. Mm. And, and it's clear one or two were shot in the back, you know? Mm. So it's a terrible scene. Mm. Uh, Ibo, I, I just want to try and uh, garner sense and try and understand when we have elections playing out in any country in the world, there are conversations around the expectations of what ordinary Zimbabweans in, in, in this case would want from a leader. Now, Emerson Mnangagwa has not been in power for very long, but he has promised economic reform, more jobs, unemployment, a huge problem in Zimbabwe right now. What are the expectations of ordinary Zimbabweans you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis? What do they want to see differently should zanu pf take this poll again this time around well let me put it very clearly to you there was there, there, in our view there's been a definite correlation between the massive rallies that the opposition uh in particular shamisa commanded across the country both urban and rural on the one end and the likely outcome which would have which should have been a massive landslide victory for Shamisa. So people are angry about that. The election, in any, by all accounts, the election has been stolen again by, by um, the military. I think, and secondly, we're naive to have expected that after the army took over in February, in November 15th, uh, 19, uh, 20, 2017, that it would have, it would have uh, allowed a transition from from Zanzibar to the opposition. We're naive. With hindsight, we're, we're naive to expect that. So I'm not surprised at all. Mm -hmm. Ibo uh, what, what, what surprises me, which I must just say, is the silence from the neighbourhood, including South Africa, mm -hmm. including SADC, which just blessed the election. Mm. It's a disgrace, if I may put it to you. What would you like SADC and the AU and neighbouring countries to do at this point, Ibo? Namely, to ensure that all member states conform to SADC rules on elections. Okay? Mm. Yes, they're a damn disgrace. Asking. All right, that was Ebo Mandaza, a Zimbabwean who was watching uh, this unfold, this afternoon's uh, developments unfold in Harare uh, from a restaurant on live television.